Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be looking at what some of the old masters used to do. Today we're going to be looking at a Kosen Judo video and you're going to see that when your priority is not really scoring or I should say uh, getting the best out of the competition, meaning points or whatever it is, I think there's a lot of creativity to be learned. So the old masters they had these little details, little tricks that are, I don't want to say forgotten because we can clearly access them, but I think due to lack of research and a lot of competition rules, a lot of things tend to get left out, but nonetheless, they're very valuable. So today we're going to be looking at Kanae Hirata's work, an old master, and you're going to see, uh, just look him up on YouTube and you're going to see a lot of things. Um, so this one here, it looks like a deep uh, collar grip that's about to take uh, a guard pull, but it turns into a takedown. So it's very similar to uh, Uki Otoshi or the first technique you see in the Judo Kata. So here it is in a more dynamic way you see. And at one point where they have one leg you just roll them over because you have that deep color grip and the other one is gripping. But of course, you have to be mindful of the rules. You can't just grip and stay there for long, of course. But this is what I mean by rules can actually put things to the side. And uh, Uki Otoshi is actually a very rare throw uh, to see in competition. And it's because it's very difficult. You have just your two hands and letting someone go over forward. This is the key. So it's not about you turning uh, or throwing them forward to you. It's about them, their direction, and it is going forward. There's another technique for the different direction. But here you see from the deep cross uh, collar grip and the other one uh, on the chest level, as you are rotating them at one point where they are shifting their weight, you can whip the lapel and they can fall off. And uh, you can get something quite interesting in terms of a variation of this very throw. Like I said, they have their little details, their little tricks that make things quite uh, interesting. Here, for example, as they counter an O Soto Gari. Next one is Tomoe Nage. Everyone knows this classical throw, but yet there's always uh, little grips that you can do either like in Sambo, sometimes they uh, catapult the inner thigh or uh, grab the, I think uh, the belt or right above the skirt or sorry right above the belt so here you have one armpit grip and at the same time you have a belt grip and in my opinion this makes it very efficient because when you pull that belt they cannot bend over they cannot uh, do any of the protective measures against a throw like Tomoinagi. So when you pull that belt and then position yourself properly, do not extend your leg too early, you're gonna get a great uh, throw. Or you can grip where the embroidery is between where the jacket splits in half. That also is a great option if you cannot access the belt. Um, but nonetheless, if you pull them here from that point, and the armpit grip, or it can be a lapel, uh, or on the outside of the sleeve behind the tricep, you can have a great tomoenage with this, and it's very hard to escape it. So, usually we look at tomoenage from here, so we throw the leg usually on the sleeve side, however, traditionally it's on the lapel side, there is one that does this, and it is Tsunoda, I believe she's now three times world champion and uh, nobody can counter it for some reason. And uh, again, the fundamentals, the old stuff that the masters used to do with a little bit of detailing, in my opinion, it is best. And I do believe that there's a lot of stuff out there that all we have to do is keep looking. So in competition, you see on the sleeve side, a lot of us, we do the Yoko Tomoinage like this one here. It's very beautiful, the whipping of the sleeve, etc. But it is not the uh, main variation, nor 
it is the only one because there's just so many ways you can do it as you just saw the belt grip is something personally i'd like to try so now let's go over into submissions and you're gonna see here first one is uh when you have a difficulty trying to liberate the arm for whatever reason you can always go for a bicep slice so here he is trying to pin the head but he retreats the leg and put it over the forearm but it has to be the arm underneath because he has to lift it up to create more pressure on the uh, on the bicep and uh, that's how you actually get it so you see you have to have your arm in between the bicep and the forearm and here all you have to do is just lift the elbow and maybe extend the hips a little bit so it's a form of a sankaku gatame and uh, it's great i don't know if it's legal in judo but um i at least you can i believe you can get a pin from this position maybe i'm 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 not sure because don't care too much for rules now next one jujitsu guys help me understand this one or if you have seen it before please let me know because you rarely see it it is called a double wrist lock but here it is not the case so you have the tangled arms hence the name but it is not a double wrist lock but here you take the meaty part uh, underneath the pinky finger and you rotate the wrist outward and then you uh, push your wrist upward this becomes a wrist lock i believe and somewhat similar to the nikyo in aikido i'm not sure but i would i believe it would have a very similar effect and it can be quite painful now wrist locks in judo are illegal i don't know if the referee you can get away with it if the referee does not understand what you're doing but um jujitsu guys if this has been done or someone does it let me know down below i would really appreciate it so usually traditionally we see the entangled arms this way and you do with your arms kind of like uh like the motorcycle but to the other side and you can get it here if you pin the elbow close to their ribs or as hickson does just do a little bit of a uh, elbow lift as you bring everything close to you like you're brushing the mat as he said but the wrist lock variation is quite interesting let me know if you've seen it before or of course you can have a reversed type everyone calls it kimura so if you have anything to add please let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening